Welcome back everyone. John here with you again, J and W Music. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, you know starting a music store. You know, and really it's gonna be you know the same for any business, but just kind of give you our background. We've had several people uh, leave some comments, ask some questions about you know what are we doing, how did we get started, uh, you know, several years ago. So you know, as, as far as here in our local area, the first thing you need to do, you know, is get a business license. You need to be legit. Uh, here in our local area in Northwest Louisiana, you know, it's $50, you know, so really just to start your business, you know, it takes 50 bucks. You know, you go down to the, uh, your local courthouse, you know, and, uh, you know, apply for a business license. So that's your first step. Uh, the next step is probably to uh, register with the state you know, depending on, and, and your local uh, office can, you know, tell you that county where we have parishes here in Louisiana, but your local, you know, county or wherever you're getting your license from can tell you the next step. But uh, go to the state, uh, get registered. You know, they're going to send you everything in the mail. Those are things you got to kind of post on your wall. Uh, the next thing you got to decide is whether or not you want to be a sole proprietor, LLC, which you have to register those with your state uh, normally. and there's a little bit of fee associated with that, but there is some extra protection uh, being an LLC, and that's not super expensive. Um, usually, the filing fee is anywhere between two hundred and fifty and five hundred dollars, but all that stuff's tax deductible also. So just think of whether or not you want to be a sole proprietor or LLC. Then you need to get, you know, your EIN number because if you're sole proprietor, you can still use your social, but uh, if you're going to be a business, then you need a uh, an EIN. Uh, uh, you know, you need your uh, electronic uh, number, your uh, federal ID number as an employer. You know, if you start off small, definitely I would, uh, you know, we, we start off really, it's just a, a literally a mom and pop. It's, it's me and my wife and then, uh, you know, the kids work here and uh, help uh, out. So I don't really have any additional employees. I do have uh, that I kind of subcontract out. Uh, someone who does our guitar lessons and repairs and so with that when you know they have lessons or repairs like I say they're not really employee we do a 1099 uh, because they don't they're not here all the time they make their own schedule they're kind of self-employed uh, so those are uh, things to look into if you've got somebody who's uh, doing your repairs or lessons um, and they're not renting a space from you they're actually the money's coming through you so something to think about uh, you know, because that's even more of a headache when you've got employees and got to uh, take out withholdings and, and all of those things. So, and you got to make sure that you're straight with the tax man. Uh, next, you know, you, you've also got to start figuring out your inventory. You know, you've got to contact now that you got your business license, now you're legit, now you can start calling uh, wholesale distributors. You know, and you know, because you're going to fill out an application, you've got to, a lot of times, you've got to scan and copy your email or fax your uh, business license because they want to make sure that you're going to continue to come back and buy from them. you're not just a you know a regular you know regular joe and you're just going to order one time but you just want a cheap price and they're never going to hear from you again you know you can go to you know one of their distributors um you know somebody online or guitar center or somebody like me and buy it but um yeah, you got to have that business license first and foremost for anybody to talk to you. Uh, line up your distributors. You know you're going to need some. You're going to need some money. You know, you're going to need a place. Um, like I say, if you're going to, most uh, distributors they would prefer you to have a brick and mortar. Some of them will allow you to be your own uh, online. You know, but you know, and then that's that's an even you know bigger market to get you know, kind of lost in. That's a big ocean being online and somebody's got to find you, you know, if you're going to do your website. But, you know, you have your map pricing, your minimum advertised pricing, your distributors are going to tell you you have to uh, to go by also. But, yeah, if you don't have a brick and mortar, it's, it's even tougher. You know, it's best to kind of have a brick and mortar and if you want to dabble a little online, even though there is eBay reverb and Craigslist and Facebook and all these other social media sites to advertise on and, and put stuff with but you got to find a place to rent uh, here where we are in northwest Louisiana it's about a dollar a foot you know we're in a decent size area Shreveport Bossier area and all the surroundings uh, we're not the largest but it's about 400,000 people so um, it's it's a decent size 
town. Uh, in, in saying that, um, there is us, who's a uh, kind of mainly a guitar center, but we dabble in uh, a little bit of everything else. We're, we're mainly a, a guitar shop in what we do, but we do also have uh, band equipment because we're in between uh, a high school and a middle school that has a really strong band program. Uh, we have uh, another uh, store down the road, which they primarily deal in band equipment, and they actually have uh, programs with the schools to maintain you know, their band equipment, their brass and woodwind and things like that. So they're not necessarily a competition for us except when we sell a few accessories, but usually the reason we sell more accessories is just in our one area because we're within walking distance of the schools where they've got to go four or five more miles down the road. You know, but as far as the rest of the area, that's predominantly where the uh, where the schools go for their equipment or accessories. Uh, then we have another mom and pop that's in uh, Shreveport because, like I say, in Bossier, I'm basically the only guitar shop uh, on this side of the river. But in Shreveport, there is a uh, an older music store. Uh, it's really, it's been around for about 80 years now uh, in name, even though it switched ownership a few times. But in name, it's been around uh, about 80 years. And then there is a, uh, a small, um, really only, I would say it was probably about 3,000 square feet. It's one of the smallest guitar centers that, that I've seen. But uh, like I say, it's probably about 3,000 square feet um, guitar center in our town. So that's really all there is. There's... Uh, uh, two mom and pop uh, guitar shops, one guitar center, and then uh, one music store that caters to to school band uh, equipment. But you gotta you gotta find a place. Like I said, it's about a dollar a foot. So where I am, uh, I'm in about 1450 square feet. So there again, you're looking about fourteen hundred dollars or more a month. Then you've got your utilities, you know, electric, water, all that other stuff. So you know, factor in another few hundred dollars, you know for that, you know, if it's a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars a month for electric and another hundred dollars for water, you know, on top of your fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars for rent, you know. So I mean, just just be prepared to spend about two thousand dollars a month in rent and utilities before you sell the first, you know, pack of strings. You know, in saying that, now you've got to buy this equipment. Um, so go out and look um, like I say, if you're gonna if you're gonna get all brand new stuff, you're gonna have a lot of money tied up in that. And in saying that, you know, Guitar Center and all these other places, especially if you're starting new in an area, you know, now you're probably you don't have the same buying power as some of these big stores or even an established mom and pop. So now you've got to go and and probably buy at a higher rate you know, uh, all this new equipment. So that's something to think about that you may already be you know you know under the gun as far as trying to sell something at a competitive price when you've got to pay more than somebody who's already established a larger mom and pop or a big box store like guitar center um where where we kind of cut some of the corners in that and have a little bit better margin is we deal uh have a lot more extensive uh used gear uh than any other shop in in town we're actually northwest louisiana's largest uh used and consignment music store so i mean we anything that comes in the door uh music wise i mean we'll we'll carry it you know for somebody because we don't own it you know it's kind of free inventory for us you know we'll do it now when we trade in stuff or buy used equipment then of course we're uh we're a little bit more pickier on what we get in because we want to make sure that now that our money's in it tied into it that we'll be able to sell it and be able to get our money out our our thinking and, and maybe yours too like I say if you want to open a music store ours is like a 30-day turnaround if, if we're gonna own the equipment and we want to sell it uh, we think about 30 days turn and burn so you know you, you gotta think about that so whenever you uh, bring something in you know you got to look at the the market value of what it's currently going for and then you got to put in you know your profit margin so whatever you think it takes for you to uh, you know, run a business. Now we we do consignments, so when we do consignments. Um, our margin is is 30%. We do 70/30. We give 70% back to the customer. We keep 30 because we're the ones that maintain it. We keep insurance on everything. We have to pay for the lights. 
you know, the building, everything here for them to sell it. Plus also if somebody pays with a, a credit card, then we accept those fees, you know, in our uh, 30%. So that 5% credit card fee comes off the top on our side, the customer still walks away with 70%. And then generally, uh, what we do if something, if something comes in trade in, we'll do 50% because that same thing. Now we own it and now we have to sit on it. We hope it sells in 30 days, but it could sit here for a year. So, where the customer uh, that came in and, and sold it to us, they've got the cash, they walked off, they've, they've, you know, they can spend their money time they, you know, in any way they want to, but we're still holding on to it. Hope it sells but it could sit here for a while and like i say even if we hoped for a 50 percent you know margin in that you know somebody could come in and you know if it sits here for a while then we've got to mark it down so then you know our profit margin dwindles down the lo longer it's here because now we're willing down and we may be back down to that same 30 percent that we did on a consignment but now we own the whole thing so those are things to think about but you've got to get your inventory um, if, like I say, if you try and go out regionally, I don't know how, how large your area would be wherever you're trying to set up, but try to go to a, a major city. Ours, uh, our next closest major city uh, is Dallas or Houston. So uh, sometimes we've made, if stuff doesn't come in the shop quick enough, we've made runs uh, to Dallas and to Houston and to other bigger areas uh, and picked up whether or not you go to trade shows. Uh, other pawn shops, uh, other areas to look for used equipment, but bring something back that's eclectic. Like I say, we've got stuff from the 60s, 70s on up. We've got stuff made in America, Japan, Mexico, and and everywhere in between. You know, you need to have something you know eclectic. You know where you are. And same thing with amplifiers. People love tube amps, but try you know people love brand names. Fender does really well where we are. People love tube amps, so try and get some. Uh, some tube amps besides just your normal, you know, solid state uh, amplifier. So try and get an eclectic blend of things. I know for us, acoustics uh, do better. Uh, we sell more of those than electric. I like to say Fender does better. Everybody asks for, uh, you know, the Gibson and Fender brand names. Uh, bass wise, five and six string are kind of the newest thing in our area that are going wild. People are buying five and six string. And then getting back to brand name you know i will say at least for us where we are you know a lot of people are asking for the gibson brand name or the the fender brand name wanting usa stuff but the thing is is people ask those names but they want to pay epiphone prices or you know they want to play, pay squire prices so you know you know they you know they'll they'll want a, a fifteen hundred dollar you know usa fender but they'll only want to pay you know, five hundred dollars for a you know a, a Mexican Fender price tag on, or the same thing. They'll want to, you know, you you you'll want a same thing as far as you know fifteen hundred dollar, you know, SG uh, Gibson, but only want to pay you know five hundred dollars, you know, for something that's kind of a you know a Epiphone Les Paul, uh, Les Paul standard, you know, price. So just be mindful of that. You know, people are going to want. The brand name but they're going to want a deal they're not going to want to pay the branding price so they're just going to have to you know you're going to have to work that out too so just throwing a little bit of honesty out there to everybody as far as running a business and 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 how kind of sales things work people come into music shops all the time even though you go to the grocery store and you don't haggle over the price of the bread or the eggs or anything else you got at a grocery store you know and they have a certain profit margin you have the same thing here in this business or any others. You got a certain profit margin, but they want to come in uh, to the music store and and they want to haggle the the prices down. But you've already kind of set them to where you know you thought they were fair. So you've got those those kind of customers in there too. So just be mindful of that. Um, you know, always be respectful of the customer. Always take care of them. Uh, always do your best. Uh, that same old saying: you can't please everybody all the time, but you know, just do your best if you're nice, respectful. You know, a uh, vast majority of the customers are gonna appreciate that. And here is a, is a mom and pop, the kind of the uh, kind of a saying here to to let everybody know is you know you're gonna they're gonna start off you know as a customer, then they're gonna become your friend, and then they're gonna be family. And the reason I say that is if it's just you, unlike the big box stores like Guitar Center, 
where every time they go in, it's somebody else different. They ask the same question. Three different people are going to get three different answers. They come to you. They're going to see you every time. They share a little bit of your life. Uh, you share with them. They share with you. So the next time they come in, you're going to ask them, hey, how did that go last time? Or how's this doing for you? Or how's the family? Or, or whatever. So you continue to build that rapport. And then pretty soon they're just coming in to hang out. But, you know, next time they come in, hey, I didn't know you had that. You know, wasn't here last time. Let me get that. Or, shoot, you know, I, I need another pack of strings. Or I, I need a strap for this other guitar I got. So, you know, like I say, just building that rapport, like I say, going from customer, friend, to family, um, it'll go a long way. But uh, I hope this video was uh, helpful to you. You know, if you got any other comments or any other suggestions uh, about, you know, how to run a store, if you've got one uh, in your area that's uh, similar to this, you know, please let us know in the comments below. You know, uh, if you like our videos, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and share. We appreciate when uh, you let others know about our channel. And if you'd like to be a part of the J&W Music family, go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button. That way the next time we have a video, you'll be one of the first ones notified. And as always here, our motto, stop dreaming, start playing. We'll see you next time.